Hello, welcome or welcome back. For later this week I have planned a rather sophisticated and somewhat difficult to teach movement lesson, movement sequence, but for today I thought we should or we shall do something more simple, a basic Feldenkrais lesson from the book of Moshe Feldenkrais Awareness Through Movement, lesson number 8. And even though the movements will be the same, the talking isn't and the purpose may be a different. So maybe our purpose for this lesson is to improve the hip joint balance, the coordination of the body, how all the parts play together. If we think along these lines, I think something worthwhile doing, a simple, cute little lesson. You will need a lot of space so you can roll around quite literally and <laughs> let's get started and uh, we start in sitting safety first A safety helmet okay <laughs> we start sitting with the feet in front of us can we talk like this the feet in front of the pelvis yes somewhere in front of us and we will take one foot why not take the left one first and how to <laughs> how to hold the foot how to lift the foot with both hands so that's the purpose uh, of not the purpose but the, the first movement is to lift the left foot off the floor and lift it up and bring it up and bring it where where does it go where can a foot go when you lift it? And and the first question, of course, is how you how how do you hold a leg? How do you touch a foot with your hands? Your foot with your hands, your left foot, and maybe notice that you have five toes. I hope so. Uh, a big one I think as a baby you might have put that big toe in your mouth already <laughs> did we I have no recollection of that uh, maybe I didn't do that maybe you did <laughs> so a big toe and four smaller toes and we will work with the foot in the next lesson so can you Distinguish the toes in your perception and your feeling when you touch your toes one by one. Can you feel them one by one? And how are your toes? Are they like in a straight line or do they form a little curve? Which is your longest toe? And do you have a space in between your big toe and your second toe? I think in China they count from left to right so the small toe is the first one or the tenth something like this I think for us the big toe is the first one isn't it so uh, let's grab let's grab the four toes with your right hand the four toes of your left foot with your right hand so put the thumb of your right hand in between the space of your left big toe and the other toes so you can hold the four toes or the forefoot with your right hand and with your left hand get hold of your heel like you would scoop up a baby scoop up your heel so that's a the proposed way to hold and lift your foot and uh, let's think of the things we have the hip joint the knee 
how far the left knee is pointing outwards or is going outwards, how far do you have to pull backwards in order to lift your left leg, how far can you bring it out. And it's not so much a matter of execution, of producing a movement for spending energy, <laughs> slimming down, improving the body figure. No, it's a movement to experience ourselves and how everything works together. Your left arm, your right arm, your left leg. What do you do with your right leg? And can you touch your heel of your left leg, the left heel, can you touch it to the back of your head? Or can you not? Like, I cannot certainly, uh, by far, I cannot even touch my big toe to my mouth anymore. Even if I would like to have a make-up session for that experience as a baby, I, it's not, or maybe <laughs> you can, and it's not so much a matter of achieving something, but of feeling, maybe you want to close your eyes, of feeling how you lift, what is the movement in your hip joint, the movement in your lower back, range of motion, of course, but trajectory, coordination, sequence and being able to and that's why I spend so much time on that it's just being able to just sit and enjoy and feel be in the moment See how you have to shift your weight, how you have to move, what moves first, how much power do you need to lift your heel towards your forehead. And then mm, uh, Moshe Feldenkrais proposed to do the same movement, but in a different position. So, we use positions not as something to achieve, but something we can easily assume to explore a movement. So, please come to rest on your back. Change your position to come to rest on your back. Feel how that is today to be on the back. How much space you have in your back. Do you feel evened out or do you feel like you worked a bit with your left leg? So do you have a tendency to to roll to the left, is your left leg flatter, more close to the floor, longer than your right one or the other way around? Maybe it's not symmetric. If you allow yourself to feel, and then we continue with the same movement. So please stand your legs and now again. Get hold of your left foot. So, of course, you might need to lift your head, reach with your arms to hold your... to make first contact with your left foot, to find a way to hold your foot, to support your foot, and the proposed way is to hold your four toes, the four smaller toes. Is it lesser toes or smaller toes with your right hand and your left heel with your left hand? And again, see if you can 
lift your left foot, which is a movement comprised of pushing the foot away from you and bringing it closer to you. So, what do you feel is different in this position? So maybe your right leg is not as useless anymore as it was in sitting, so you can help yourself become rounder. You can help yourself push with your right foot. What's different in this position? What can you what advantage for this movement do you have in this position? Or what disadvantage? And then we will continue to the next step in this lesson, which is to roll your pelvis to the left so as to touch your left knee to the floor, to your left, where? And now we bend the head more. So with your head, with your forehead, come towards your knee. Or with your forehead, move further than your knee. With your forehead, with your head, move around your knee and towards your foot. So that's a big change in the movement pattern. Instead of bringing your foot to your face, you bring your face towards your foot while the foot is doing what? So, again, the left knee to the left and your forehead coming closer to your knee and around your knee, yes, towards your left foot, which will bring you eventually into a seated position. if you allow yourself to, to go that far. So you might end up somehow in side sitting and then you need to go the same way back down again to arrive on your back if you went all the way up. Or you could just simply explore the first part of this movement. How is it when you bring your foot closer to your face, or your face closer to your foot, by making a little curve to the left, instead of trying to go straight forward. So instead of running straight for the goal, we make a little swing to the left instead, or the beginning of a swing. We don't need to be too ambitious. I think the important part here is to enjoy ourselves, to enjoy how it feels to hold your leg, to lift your head, to shift your weight, to be aware of yourself, to be in the moment. to explore, to be curious.
and then at some point we take a break again a short rest on the back again just to feel how it feels like And then in the next step in this lesson, it's not much of a difference, but we will start in side sitting with the right leg folded behind and then in side sitting get hold of your left foot with your hands again and we will venture down. So instead of coming from side lying up to sitting, we will go from sitting more towards side lying if you want to do the whole movement or you just explore how it is to bend down forwards with your head towards your foot, your left foot. Instead of lifting your left foot, you bend your head down towards your foot and start to explore this little movement to the left. You don't need to do the whole roll. So I want to steer away from the big rolling, the big action, the big uh, fun movement gymnastics class, but instead focus on the movement itself, however small or big it might present itself. <laughs> or you might feel you want to do it. And then at some point we take a rest again on the back and see how it is to be on the back again. What has changed so far in our perception of ourselves, in our breathing, in the way we feel, perceive ourselves. And then we will attend to the other side. So I think about, try to remember how it was in sitting at the beginning of the lesson when we didn't know quite yet what to do. And how is it when you imagine you sit 
or how would you sit and you reach for your right foot? How is it? Can you feel the toes of your right foot, the big toe, the four smaller toes, the shape of the toes? Can you feel the pads of your right toes, the sole of your right foot, the heel? How would you hold the right foot? How would that feel like? How would it feel like to lift your right foot? And actually we could try this experiment in our mind. How would it feel like to be on your back, which you are, and roll to the right and roll up and roll down? How, how would these movements you just did on the left side, how would they feel, presumably, how would they be on the right side? How far would you be able to move your nose towards your right knee or your forehead? How far would you be able to lift your right foot? Would you be able to give your right big toe a little kiss? And then let's see in, in so far in how much the imagination matches the reality. We have three movements, do we? One in sitting, lifting the right leg, one in lying on the back to roll to the right and come up to sit, or from sitting, roll to lying down. Play with these movements. How do you hold your right foot? How does it lift? <laughs> or not lift? And of course you can explore this, or you should explore this movement. And I, I think that's maybe the luxury of doing these movements at home without supervision. You can experiment, nobody's scolding you, nobody's stopping you. Maybe that's not the best thing. So you have to take care of yourself, not to hurt yourself, know your limits. Question your limits also. You can combine rolling to the right and to the left. You can roll around quite a bit. Or you can stay more within a very small range of movement and explore the very details. However, you feel like, of course.
And uh, so this is the, the whole lesson from the book. Maybe you have experienced quite a big improvement. And if it wasn't for flexibility, then maybe just the way you sit on the floor, the way you breathe, the way you feel, or maybe the way you can lie down and come up, something, something for sure has improved for you as well as for me. I feel more free in my limited range of movement. Maybe I should work more on that for sure. I should, maybe I will, I might. And so let's come to the end. This is the end of the lesson of this video and we will see how it is in standing, how we feel like in standing. So please come up to, to an upright position. Yes, to, <laughs> to feel how it is to stand, to shift your weight from one foot, from one leg to the other. So that might have improved. Interesting teaching style, not to focus on flexibility or strength or demonstration of a large movement, difficult to copy. No, just the very details and the ability to enjoy ourselves in movement, maybe a movement like meditation. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting my work. It was my pleasure to be with you for this time, to move and roll with you in this time and see you in the next video.